Hey everyone, Erin from The Impatient Gardener. Today we're going to do something different. We're going to go on a little bit of a container tour. You know, I only planted up one of my containers uh, in a video this year, and that's partly because I know that you guys see a lot of container planting videos. And uh, after a while, I feel like it gets maybe a little stale. And I don't know about you, but when I get plants for containers, you know, they're small. They rarely look like much when you actually plant the container. So I wanted to give everything um, a few weeks to grow in a little bit before I showed you everything. And so everything's been planted now for at least two to three weeks. And I thought I'd just take you around and show you all the containers that I've planted up this year, which are more than I thought there was going to be. So let's start here at the big container by the front door. Uh, this is a new container this year. I planted it up for spring, so you might have seen it already, but this is a 36 inch cube container. It's teak on the outside, but there is a separate fiberglass liner inside of it. And uh, obviously I went big here. So I always feel like because the stairs um, are so tall here and our foundation is so high that a big container here is important to give some scale reference. So that's why I think this container uh, works out pretty well here. Now, uh, obviously we've got a big banana here as a centerpiece. I've been wanting to plant a banana for a while and I found this one um, and I'm really happy with how it's growing. It's putting on a fair bit of growth already. So I think it's, um, I think it's right for this spot. And then I went kind of asymmetric on the inside here. So um, there's a little bit of of symmetry in the front here in that we've got Trascantia, Purple Heart. Actually, I think this is uh, Pink Stripes is the cultivar uh, in both corners. And in between that, we've got some Creeping Wire Vine, Dichondra Silver Falls. And then we have, they're all kind of out of bloom right this second, but we've got uh, two Verbenas here. This is um, uh, a sparkling amethyst. You can see a little bit of the flower there. You guys will recognize that. And then we've got this one, which is called apple, which really brings in that chartreuse color that I love and love to repeat in all my containers. Behind that, we've got uh, Euphorbia Ascot Rainbow, which gets just a touch of pink on the tips of the new growth. We've got three of the same dahlias in here. This is Melody, uh, Melody, swing pink allegro or melody pink allegro it only gets about 20 inches tall big bright pink bloom on it my favorite wild magic basil which i grow primarily for the flowers and then we've got some uh, nicotiana lime green uh, this is uh, the perfume lime green this is another short variety and that's kind of across the back here and then we have um, actually a foxglove back here, but I think this is actually Digiplexus. I think this is Arctic, Arctic Rose, perhaps. And that's been blooming right along here. So we'll have good height there. Um, and as these, as these banana leaves sort of get frayed, I've been cutting them off. So the whole canopy will continue to raise a little bit here. So this is sort of a loose container and I like that. And I think you're able to do that much much more easily in such a large container. You don't have to worry as much about symmetry. Uh, next we'll pop in on the birch containers. I did do a video planting these up. Um, the trees themselves are doing great. Uh, you may remember that I planted some James Britannia Safari Dawn in there and I had said at the time that I thought it was looking a little bare and so I did actually add in some Carrick's Flocka Blue Zinger which I just dug up out of the yard almost identical foliage color, but there's a difference in foliage texture there. And it has kind of a meadowy look that I think is sort of nice. Just making my way down the patio here. Uh, so we, I have a lotus uh, in a pot by the front door again this year. This is a medium lotus and I forget which variety it is. Uh, and so far it's doing really good. The leaves are starting to come up off the water. So the first leaves on Lotus float on the surface and then the successive leaves as it gets a little bit more mature come up. And so uh, it'll be a while before we get flowers here, but I think the leaves are pretty enough uh, to really carry this container once they get growing a little bit. So I have two of these sort of wicker pots uh, just kind of in this corner. These both have the Spanish lavender that I grew from cuttings over winter. I did make a video on that and I potted uh, this one is just the lavender and this one is lavender plus uh, my favorite ornamental oregano Kent Beauty, which I always think those two make such a nice combination. Next up the window box. 
which I'm so happy with. This is, I think, one of my favorite iterations of this window box. So I kept myself to a pretty specific color palette this year. In the back, right here, you can see unplugged so blue salvia those are just starting to get their height so those should stick up a little bit more uh, there's three of them back there and those will bloom all year i had those last year and really loved them i thought they'd be perfect for the window box the main thing that you see here is actually this carrick's toffee twist which is sort of funny uh, some people say it looks like a dead grass and it does but it offers this great texture and this coppery color that obviously is sets it off as being different now, I always like to grow something up the corners of the box to sort of make the window. I mean, we have a kind of a large expanse of just white on our house. And so I think that helps draw your eye up a little bit and add some scale. This year I'm growing Asarina. I think it's called Joan London. Joan something, I'll put the name on the screen for you. Uh, that's Snapdragon vine, although it's not a Snapdragon. It has beautiful little purple flowers. And you can see it's climbing up uh, the supports quite well there. In sort of the front tier here, I've got a lot of Superbina Royal Blue, which is really looking great. You guys can tell I really like Verbenas quite a bit. And we've offset that with some of this kind of red sweet potato vine to bring out that coppery color. There is the white in here is a, um, is a trailing Angelonia. And then, of course, we brought in my favorite uh, chartreuse color. It, once again, this is the Nicotiana Perfume Lime, grown from seed. Oh, and we have, as a trailer here, we do have a couple of Dichondra Silver Falls. My hope is that the sweet potato vine will start doing a little bit of trailing, too. Um, but this is not as aggressive of a sweet potato vine as some varieties are. So that color scheme has informed what's happened in this front bed here. Now I have my big dahlias growing in the back. These are uh, and come in a variety of colors. They're kind of all mishmash of different colors behind there. So the back of it gets, you know, really quite wild and crazy in terms of color. But the front I like to have a little bit more orderly. And so I've used many of the same plants from the window box down here. So you'll see once again that I have the um, salvia, uh, so unplugged, so blue. I've got the Nicotiana in there. I've got uh, the Toffee Twist Carex, which is dotted evenly throughout the bed. To bring in that blue foliage color, I've got uh, Helichrysum Icicles. This is actually a uh, Delphinium. It's sort of flopped here, but this is a Delphinium that self-seeded itself there. It's cheer blue. Uh, that gets to stay. And then I've added in uh, some of the Sun Patience Compact Orchid Blush here as well. Oh, and for just a hint of white, which I think is helpful to uh, make this have a little bit of relevance to the White House, I've got the um, tall white Angelonia here. So when I plant this bed behind me, one of the things I do there is plant in multiples because even though it's very repetitive, if you just plant a single plant, it can tend to get a little busy. So that's why I have like two sun patients in each location and I have uh, two or three Nicotianas in each spot. I think, oh yeah, and two and two salvias in each spot so that you get larger blocks of color and as they grow, they don't look like two separate plants. They look like one plant. All right, moving on, we've got a little cluster of pots right here. This is Miss Figgy Fig. Uh, got repotted into kind of a nice pot because I had an ordering mistake. I was gonna use that pot for something else and it turned out to be perfect for Miss Figgy. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna get fruit on her this year or not, but she overwintered in the basement just fine and I think it's a, a beautiful leaf structure anyway. Uh, now we just had a big rain last night, so the petunias are looking a little a little downtrodden here, but this is Easy Wave Petunias Blue and Lavender Blue with a purple sage in the middle of it. I just wanted to do kind of a all blue container. And this last one is a bit of an experiment. This is Euphorbia Lambii, which I got from Annie's Annuals when I was ordering something else. And uh, I just thought I'd give it a try. It's supposed to get almost like a tree, but I don't know if it'll do that in our area. So I'm trying it in a pot this year. Uh, I thought it might be good to try out for future potential use in a container. As we move down the patio here, 
We've got another cluster of pots. Now, this is a new planter as well. When we added in the teak planter by the front door, I really wanted a matching planter for the front here. So I got this, uh, this teak trough basically, and this replaces a smaller one that we had here. But once again, I'm growing all edibles in this. Uh, and I think it's a way to show that a pot that is all edibles can be beautiful as well. So we've got two tomatoes in here. These are both dwarf tomatoes. Um, and they're both doing really well. You can see we've got a lot of flowers. We've even got some fruit hiding in there. And then we've got uh, three peppers here. This is peppers from heaven, red, there's orange, and then there's yellow down there. There's fruit on those. Those are some samples that I got from Burpee. Yeah, those all came as trial plants from Burpee this year. I've got uh, two uh, emerald towers basils in here that I grew from seed. I like having basil right outside the back door. I grew a lot of it in the vegetable garden, but it's nice to be able to come out and grab it. We've got some more seascape strawberries, which I did a video on planting those in the vegetable garden. And then I've thrown for some color and some interest. And because they're also edible, I've thrown in some nasturtiums in here as well to kind of fill this out. Here we have the uh, Nagami kumquat that I overwintered. I never have luck with citrus, and I would say this one is struggling a little bit, although now it's got some nice new growth coming on it. It's starting to come out of these really yellow leaves, and um, I think it's a pretty plant. I don't really have any expectation, I think, that I'm ever going to get a kumquat from it. And then I've just underplanted it with a little uh, pilea uh, that I found that I think is kind of pretty draping out of the pot. This is just a little geranium. I can't tell you the name of it. I'm sorry. I ordered it from a place called uh, uh, Geraniaceae, which is a geranium specialist. And I had, you know, I was had to fill out an order, and it's really quite pretty. Um, but what's interesting about this is that I these are all cuttings from last year. I overwintered it inside. It was getting really leggy, so I cut the whole thing back, started over from cuttings. Then over here, we just have a couple of things that are just sort of in a holding pattern. Uh, until they get around to blooming. So that's pineapple lilies in the back. And this is name on the screen in the front because I keep forgetting what it is. Now this is the one, con so the urn is the one container that you did see me pot up. And uh, it doesn't look that much different, although it is starting to grow in really nicely. So this is, of course, a um, this is a bird of paradise in the middle. It's kind of listing a little bit because we've had a lot of west winds. And then we've got, um, this is Dichondra Emerald Falls in the front, more of the Transcantia. And then uh, just three of the Sun Patience compact rows. And so the only flowers in this whole container are those Sun Patience. And I, th oh, and of course the Ascot, uh, Ascot Rainbow, Euphorbia Ascot Rainbow. And so, so the only flowers in here are those sun patients, and I don't think it's lacking for anything. And I'm really, I'm really quite happy actually with, with this look in a garden that's very busy. Uh, you guys know that I grow a lot of dahlias in this garden. There's a lot going on here. So keeping this very bold so that it wouldn't get lost in sort of the mishmash, I think was pretty important. So this is sort of the trough planter by the garage, which I did something a little different in. Uh, this is actually um, just a house plant that needed dividing. And so I divided it and planted it in here because it's such great foliage. And then we've stuck in some Dichondra Silver Falls, um, another uh, New Guinea impatient that I don't know the name of, and uh, some Plectranthus Silver Shield. That is the Plectranthus that I also grew from cuttings from last year. Um, which is just starting to really get going. And then in the back, to go up this little homemade trellis, I've got that same Acerina, again, that's in the uh, that's in the window box. Now I do need to get that going on a string trellis um, because it's sort of sliding down the bamboo stake, but we'll get that going shortly. So here on the deck for the two deck planters, um, they're really slow. So I do have purple velvine growing again this year. Uh, boy, I really had a tough time with it this year. Um, someone sent me a plant, which was really nice. And then I actually um, did have a couple of cuttings grow. So I was able to do that, but it was a fight with bugs the whole time. Um, but hopefully, you know, it looks really pokey right now, but I think once it gets going, uh, it should do what it did last year, which was cover this entire pergola. 
Uh, then we've got a Dracaena here, uh, which uh, is looking a little outsized right now, but hopefully that we'll get some better perspective on that. And then this is a begonia that I was sent as a trial plant, which is supposed to get huge. Um, and I would like it to start getting huge. And then more of the Mullenbeckia. Uh, over here, we just have another cluster of pots. This is the Senecio skyscraper that I grew last year. I overwintered inside. You, side. you can see that it's looking great. And then a foxtail lily uh, that I repotted because it was really pot bound and really needed to get out of that pot. So it's sort of in a recovery mode right now. Oh, I actually missed two pots on these side of the stairs. So um, normally I don't put anything on this side because this is where the dogs access their, their own little water pump over there. But I ran out of room for other things. So uh, this is the Chicago hardy fig, again, overwintered in the basement. And then again, this is looking a little wet from a night of rain, but this is another uh, container of easy wave petunias, the yellow and the white. And then I put in lemon verbena with it. And oh my gosh, it's the best smell ever. So this is sort of my kind of citrusy container. That's what, that's what it reminds me of. So this is supposed to be only about containers, but I just spotted from the deck that the first poppies have opened. So these are the first of the poppies. Look at this deep, dark, beautiful color here. Now, some of these are you know, self-sown. Some of these I sowed. Some of them are from saved seeds. So I don't really know what's going to pop up. Here's a beautiful purple. This is probably um, like Lauren's grape. This one is really interesting, kind of a deep, 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 deep uh, coral with a purple center. Oh, here's some little baby ones. This is what happens in areas where you don't thin your poppies. You get very small flowers. So I wanted to show you the two pots in the vegetable garden that flank the gate here. So the key plant in these, of course, is the little boss clematis, which is just starting to bloom. Has these beautiful little bell-shaped downturned flowers, and it will flower all the way across the top for most of the season. This is a group three clematis. It does just fine in these containers over winter. All of the, I cut it all the way back. So all of the growth you see here happened in the past month, basically. Then in these two containers in front of it, last year I had these albutalon standards that I loved. I couldn't find those again, and it was fine because they were really quite expensive, and I tried to overwinter them, and it didn't work. So I just picked up a Persian Shield, which I think you can't really go wrong with, some Euphorbia, I'm pretty sure that's Diamond Snow, and a little bit of Kufia. And I think it makes a perfectly beautiful container, very easy care, um, doesn't ask for much. And then I don't know if this counts as a container or not, but I want to show you the stock tank pond in the vegetable garden. Uh, so far, we just have the lotus, which is just starting to send up those leaves that come up, and then the four-leaf clover, water four-leaf clover plant that will cover this whole area. If you see that floating orb in there, that's a barley ball that I sort of have anchored. And you might be able to see the fish in there. I just put in feeder fish. They like to hang around that barley ball quite a bit. They do a good job keeping the mosquito population at bay, as well as the algae in the tank uh, at bay. And uh, they cost like a dollar a dozen. So that's helpful too. All of these containers are hand watered with the exception of three, including the ones behind me here, the window box and the vegetable trough. Everything else I hand water um, and I like doing that. It's no problem, but I, that is why I like, I favor big containers because you don't have to water them very often. It's, it's usually once a week, maybe twice a week. And then as you get towards late summer, sometimes it can be more, but uh, it's really not a big thing. And I like to be able to sort of groom them at the same time. And I've just recently started my weekly water, my weekly fertilizing. Uh, actually a week ago is when I started that. So we're just kind of getting into that stage where things are grown in enough to actually worry about fertilizing and things like that. Okay, I hope you enjoyed seeing all my containers this year. Um, of course, I'll keep showing them to you as they keep growing in, but I'm pretty happy with them so far. So I hope you are happy with your containers this year too. And uh, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.